Our community has been hugely impacted by COVID-19. Many of our beneficiaries found themselves on the shielding list. Both the impact of the virus and the measures that have been put in place to control the spread have had really negative effects on people's day-to-day -day lives. So our team has worked tirelessly this year in order to ensure people receive the right support at the right time. That's included providing crisis support, enabling people to access food, money, welfare benefits, medications. We've continued to provide personal care and support in the community. And we've worked with the hospital. We wanted to ensure that people being discharged had the right support in place to recover. Our beneficiaries have told us throughout the year how valuable our support has been. Whether that's been their personal successes, in terms of people with long-term health conditions moving into work despite lockdown, or whether that's about the kind of broader involvement conversations, such as access audits being done in the city where changes are being made, or joining the parking forum to ensure that when changes to the parking system are made, disabled people's voices are heard and understood at those times. COVID-19 has only highlighted the need for this sort of representation. We also believe that it's highlighted our organisation's ability to support the right disabled people to have the right conversations at the right time. We've been supporting traveller communities and that's all travellers, so gypsies, Irish travellers, Scottish, Welsh and non-ethnic travellers and nomads across the city. Since April we've really been supporting uh, all of the communities across all accommodation settings uh, throughout the Covid pandemic, particularly our roadsiders who um, are are struggling and found it very difficult to access the basic communities. All of the petrol stations shut down and there was no access to water. Public toilets were shut down and there was nowhere for them to put their rubbish as all of the dumps had shut down too. So we were able to lobby successfully and support the communities to be um, recognised and get water and sanitation um, access and also provision for emergency food bank and uh, emergency um, grants as well. So we've been successful in that and we haven't forgotten about the rest of the communities. We've been contacting them regularly, people from Bricks and Mortar and on site. We've been assertively outreaching via a telephone and in some cases for some of our most vulnerable clients we have been assertively outreaching too. So we've got very much a lot of hope behind us now but uh, we continue to do our wellbeing checks and support our closed Facebook pages so people can take our tutorials and get our care packages. We work primarily with people from Black, Asian and other ethnically diverse communities. We have continued to provide our dedicated social prescribing and one-to-one -one work. We have undertaken a large quantitative study that explores how COVID-19 has impacted those people from Black, Asian and other ethnically diverse communities. The findings from this study are being used by decision makers in the council and local NHS to define and focus services for these groups. We have supported groups to secure funding in order that they can adapt to the impact of COVID-19. We have supported the dissemination of information again to ensure that our communities receive accurate, up-to-date and relevant information. We continue to work with our other service provider partners, local communities and individuals to do all we can to ensure they come out of this pandemic better and stronger. We work with four and a half thousand people who speak 50 different languages and we make sure they can access health and social care services. Uh, we work with over 700 departments across uh, Sussex, so you can imagine that access has been an enormous challenge this year. Many of our beneficiaries are also vulnerable. Um, people have needed support with crisis mental health needs, domestic violence, and also safeguarding. In March last year, uh, we immediately bolstered our 24-hour interpreting service. And it's been busier than ever with people needing ambulances and access to A&E and maternity care this year. People have also been anxious and frightened. So to help, we worked hard to find, produce, and to promote 
translated information from reputable sources. We operated in an environment throughout the year which was complex, volatile and uncertain. Overnight we adapted to work on any remote communication platform. We had to develop our own secure telephone uh, conference service and continued to provide face-to-face -face interpreting wherever it was safe as well. We even launched a new bilingual telephone befriending service. So we've been very agile and innovative and our staff, trustees and interpreters have been absolutely amazing this year. One of our biggest challenges remains income. When the pandemic hit and access to healthcare was restricted, we lost 85% of our income overnight. But I'm really you know, optimistic that with the kind of people that are involved in CIS, that we will be able to be successful really and build back better and fairer which is what we want to do. So thank you for listening. COVID presented specific challenges in the Hamilton and Knoll area, including food poverty, food access, loneliness and isolation. Our response was very much focused and adapted to the emerging needs of all sections of our community. We set up an emergency food hub at St Richard's Community Centre, which was led by a member of my team alongside recruiting 15 volunteers six of whom were local young people. We delivered 397 food parcels to 53 households in the area. We also recruited a further 17 volunteers who did weekly food shops for residents struggling to access food. The community response from our residents and young people to COVID has been incredible. As well as coming together to help those in need, new friendships, groups and projects have developed resulting in a much more connected and cohesive community. Amaze is a charity that gives information, advice and support to families of children and young people with special educational needs and disabilities, SEND, in Brighton and Hove and Sussex. Our families have faced huge challenges during the pandemic with an increased caring load. In many cases, the little support that had been previously provided for families has often stopped altogether. In the first lockdown, many health and care services ceased to operate and many have been operating at reduced capacity since, leaving parents feeling exhausted, isolated, stressed and anxious. We initiated coronavirus FAQ pages on our website immediately. This was accessed by thousands of people, including nationally. Our helpline continued as a constant source of advice and our peer support groups, coffee mornings, workshops, all switched to virtual or took place outdoors. PAC steering group members met regularly to gather concerns from the SEND community. PAC and Amaze then worked very closely with the council, NHS and other partners to identify problems on the ground and find solutions. For example, we issued parent carers with letters that they could use to access priority shopping slots and we worked closely with Sussex Police to ensure that families could safely access outdoor space and exercise. We also lobbied nationally on issues affecting families such as the relaxed legislation around SEND provision. Partnership and collaborative working has at times been intense but worth all our efforts for the difference that it's made. We work in neighbourhoods across the city that experience health and wealth inequalities. During the pandemic it became clear that people needed access to trusted information, vital support services and essentials like food. We work with local community organisations to turn community centres into information hubs or food packing centres. We help small grassroots community groups adapt their activities online or reach out to people in doorstep visits, postal packs or telephone trees. We work with Community Works to set up an online help directory to help people navigate support services and we work with the Council Community Engagement Team to make sure hard copy versions of this were volunteer delivered across the city. Going forward, some of our food projects are developed into social supermarkets and other more sustainable solutions. Some of our grassroots groups have made connections with the more vulnerable and isolated within communities and people have become more connected through the outreach work done. There's been more partnership working and more city support services linking in at a neighbourhood level to make sure people could access the things they need, such as social prescribers helping people access local food banks. I hope that it's these connections and people working together that will help us recover better. 
Covid has exacerbated lots of the issues people with learning disabilities already face, namely isolation, anxiety, mental health and general poor health outcomes. People have been feeling fairly confused about the ever-changing rules and one of our roles has been to explain to people what they can and can't do throughout the year. They've also felt pretty forgotten by the system, especially with the rollout of the vaccines where there was a strong argument for people to be included in Group 6 and it was only last week that that decision was reversed which has really made people feel like they're not seen as important. Speak Out has adapted pretty well. We've managed to um, get a lot of people online. So people who were previously digitally excluded now can join groups, drop-ins and other online activities. Our training group's done lots of work um, around uh, advertising the need for people to sign up to the learning disability register with their GPs and this is especially important now with the rollout of the vaccines. Our link group has done a lot of work with the council co-producing the learning disability strategy which will roll out in April and I think will really help improve the outcomes of people with learning disabilities. We've been very successful about reaching a wide range of people throughout COVID, from people who have mild learning disabilities to those who need quite a lot of support. This means that we're able to represent, understand and engage with a broad range of people and ensure that their needs are heard and met throughout the city. We support unpaid family friend carers. Um, and that's an important thing to point out because during the COVID-19 pandemic a lot of the unpaid family carers that we work with feel as though they've lost their identity a little bit. The, when we use the term carer, um, perhaps now more than ever people think of the amazing work of NHS staff and employed carers but of course that just means an, another reason as to why unpaid family friend carers can feel isolated and forgotten. Um, so that's been a really big um, impact on, on our carers during the pandemic. Um, as to what we've done to support them during this time, all manner of things. So we've participated in food package deliveries, um, activity and craft packs for our young carers. Um, also we've been involved in two different rounds of PPE distribution to carers. And right now, as we speak, in the first week of March, we're helping to um, facilitate the rollout of carers' uh, vaccination in rights. So um, all of that, in addition to our normal support work, um, emotional support for carers, uh, information advice and signposting as well. So it's been a, a really busy time for us. Um, but most importantly, we want to raise awareness of the, the hidden army, if you like, of amazing unpaid family and friend carers. Thank you. Switchboard support the LGBTQ community across Sussex and we're based in Brighton and Hove. LGBTQ communities have faced some really unique challenges over the past year or so due to COVID. Some people, for example, are living in homes where they don't feel safe due to issues like homophobia and transphobia. Lots of trans and non-binary people have seen their medical appointments cancelled. Older LGBT people are more likely to be living alone and to be socially isolated. And we know that LGBTQ communities do have poor outcomes when it comes to things like mental health, substance abuse, smoking, and all of these things are impacted by the lockdown measures and by COVID. We have really changed some of the ways that we work over the past year. We're best known for our helpline, for example. Our volunteers have been taking helpline calls at home throughout the pandemic, but that's not all we do. We have lots of other services. For example, our disability project, which has actually thrived over the past year, being able to provide support online for people who might otherwise not have been able to access our services in the first place. So we've done some really important learning there. Our Rainbow Dementia Cafe has been sending out post packs to our members with activities that they could do at home. And our Older People's Project, for example, has been doing doorstep visits with people who might not otherwise see anybody in their week. We have plenty more services I could talk about at Switchboard, but I don't think I've got time. What I can say is that we are leaving Brighton and Hove better than we found it in the beginning of 2020. We've got plenty more work to do, but I'm so proud of the team. I'm so proud of what we've been able to do. and I'm so proud of the partnership that we're in and all the other organisations that are also achieving incredible things across the city.